I would like to start this with a question. If Jesus is Lord and now he is in heaven, who then is in charge of earth? I would like to repeat that. If Jesus is Lord and now in heaven, who then is in charge of earth? Stay tuned as we answer this question in this broadcast. My name is Norman Tolorio. You may call me by Kuya Norman, the name I got when I was studying in my graduate school in transformational leadership. I am here to let you know that your identity determines your activity. I would like to repeat that. I am here to let you know that your identity determines your activity. Shall we declare this personally by saying, can we say that? My identity determines my activity. Can we repeat that? My identity determines my activity. Allow me to greet everyone a royal day, royalty day, to all listening from all parts of the world. When I say royalty day, because when Jesus rose from the dead, he gave you a new identity, and that is, he gave you the authority to become a child of God. So I said royalty because you are now a child of God. To those who believe the message of the good, uh, the Holy Week, uh, the Resurrection Sunday yesterday, the Good Friday, the time when Jesus Christ died and rose again, this is the message for you and me. When you believe the message, then you become a child of God. That is why I said a royalty day for all who are listening today from all over the world. In this broadcast, we remember the cross and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we always celebrate Holy Communion. I believe because every time we commune with Christ, the more we get in love with Christ. Amen? Can you say amen to that? The more we commune with Jesus, the more we get in love with him. So you may join us in our communion today. If you have your bread, uh, please prepare that. Uh, the bread that symbolizes the body of Christ and the wine or the juice that represents the shed blood of Jesus Christ at the cross. I believe there are a lot of reasons why we need to celebrate the Holy Communion, but foremost and number one is that we are thankful for what Jesus Christ did at that cross. I believe the cross is the defining moment in our life and also the life of other people, the whole world practically. There is that uh, our calendar is divided into two, before Christ and after Christ, or the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. And uh, for some, you may have a, a very personal reason in taking communion, especially when you are feeling well, when you are sick, or there is something that you want Jesus to uh, to touch you. And we can partake of the communion, uh, believing that by partaking of that communion, we are also being healed by the Lord. So now let's go back to the question. If Jesus is Lord and now in heaven, who then is in charge of earth? Let's review for a while what we have learned during the past week. The week is very, uh, very, uh, a very good week for us. Can you say amen to that? Because during the week, the holy week, we learn that Jesus Christ have done a lot of things for us. And he changed history by the death and his resurrection. So, uh, in the Bible, is as we review, we we heard uh, John the Baptist declaring in John chapter one verse twenty nine, when he saw Jesus, when John the Baptist was baptizing, he saw Jesus, and he said this: Jesus is the Lamb of God that washes the sins of the world. He declared that, that Jesus is the Lamb of God that washes the sins of the world. So this was our celebration last Friday. 
Jesus is the Lamb of God that washes the sins of the world. Can we personalize that and say, Jesus is the Lamb of God that washes my sins away. Can we say that? Jesus is the Lamb of God that washes my sins away by His blood. Wow, what a beautiful picture. Another thing we learned last uh, last uh, Holy Week is that Jesus Christ was buried and that He rose again on the third day. Tama po ba? Uh, we can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 4, and this is what it says. In the New Living Translation, He was buried and He was raised from the dead on the third day. Remember, He was buried on Friday and rose again yesterday, Sunday, just as the Scripture said. Now, remember, before Jesus Christ died and rose again, for several hundreds of years, the old writers, the prophets were talking about Jesus Christ, that he will die, he will be buried, and he will rise again. So this is consistent. This is good news because we are believing on the God of the scripture who foretells everything for several years before, and it happened exactly as it is written. So we are thankful for that, that the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ was already foretold for several years before it happened. So that is why when uh, Peter and the disciples, after the resurrection of the Lord, they were the one now leading the church, and they healed the sick. And uh, the religious leaders were envious, and they called them. In what authority? In what authority are you now healing the people of their sickness? And of course, they told them about Jesus Christ. The Jesus you have rejected is the Jesus who rose again from the dead. And now he has given us now the power and the authority to heal the sick. Wow, what a beautiful picture. What a beautiful good news. That is why he said, Peter said in Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Peter said, Salvation is found in no one else, no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. What a beautiful uh, good news. Can we repeat that? Salvation is found in no one else. He's referring to Jesus Christ. For there is no other name under heaven that is in Jesus, given to mankind by which we must be saved. Wow, look at that. Your salvation, my salvation, and the salvation of the world is not dependent on the church. It is not dependent on any denomination, whatever it is. But it is dependent on whom? One man, the Lord Jesus Christ. So look at that. We are saved from our sins not for any religion but for the person can we say that not by religion but by a person i am saved and that is jesus christ wow what a beautiful uh, music to our ears because we know that we cannot save ourselves we cannot follow the commandment but jesus christ died so that the penalty of our sins that is under the law Everything must be paid for, and we cannot do that. Now he changed everything. The law is now set aside. We are now under a new covenant, and that is we are a child of God. We are not anymore under the law. Jesus Christ is the grace that saves us. He gave us a gift that is eternal life by believing on Jesus, not on any other performance. The law demands that we need to perform. But Jesus' grace is only a gift to us. So by receiving that gift, we can have eternal life. What a beautiful message. Now, Jesus Christ, when he rose again, this is what is stated in the scripture about what he is doing. Uh, please open with me to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. I hope you have your physical Bibles with you. If not, get the electronic Bible. 
Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20 to 23. I like what the message translation uh, said. This is very uh, profound, very uh, understandable. And this is what it says. Ephesians 1, 20 to 23. All these energy issues from Christ, God raised him from death and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe. So what is Christ doing now? He is in charge of running the universe. Everything from galaxies to government, no name and no power exempt from his rule. Wow. And not just for the time being, that is, but forever. So now and forever, Jesus Christ is above. There's no other name that is above every name that is Jesus. Wow. COVID-19, that's a name, but you know the name of Jesus is above all names. Can we say that? The name of Jesus is above all names. That Jesus name is above COVID-19. That Jesus name is above cancer name, whatever cancer, whatever diseases, whatever brokenness that we are now experiencing. Bankruptcy, that is a name, but Jesus is above that. We can rely on the name of Jesus because his name is above all names. And that is not just now, it is forever. Now, let's continue. He is in charge of it all, has the final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. Now, look at the word, a new word we learned today, church. Can we say that? The church, okay? The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts. Now, how does Jesus speak and acts on earth? Through his body, and that is the church, by which he feels everything with his presence. Wow. What a beautiful thing to know. So Jesus Christ is now reigning in the heavenlies. Galaxies, rulership, everything is under his control. Wow. Can we say thank you, Jesus? Now I am very close to the one who is in control of the universe. Can you say that the most powerful person in the universe is the one who is in control, correct? Am I right? And yet, the Lord Jesus said, the moment you believe me, the moment you receive me as the Lord, the moment you believe that he is Lord, then he let the spirit of God lives in us. Wow. We are very close to Jesus. We are not far. We, did not, we, do, we don't need to shout, Jesus, hear my prayer, because he is in our heart. So uh, the second thing that I want us to, to take note is that in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12 to 13 or 10 to 13 let's read hebrews 10 to 13 and see here what jesus christ is doing after his resurrection verse 10 of hebrews chapter 10 up to 14 for god's will was for us to be made holy wow god made us holy wow can you imagine that if you think that you are sinful now forget about it the moment you believe in jesus you are made holy by the blood of Jesus. When you say holy, you are set apart. You are set apart. Now we remember the, the Passover, the houses that has the blood of Jesus on top, that is set apart. It doesn't mean that when you say you are holy, there's no sin in you. What we are saying here is you are set apart. You are already marked, <laughs> marked by the stamp of approval by God himself. You are owned by the Lord. You are owned by the Lord. Wow, what a beautiful picture. Now it says here, for, for God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all time. How many times will have Jesus Christ die on the cross? Once and for all. Year after year, we remember his death, but we don't crucify again Jesus. We don't expect Jesus to rise again every year. No, because he has done it once and for all. Verse 11, 
under the old covenant, the priest stands and ministers before the altar day after day, offering the same sacrifices again and again, which can never take away sins. Verse 12, but our high priest offered himself, that is Jesus Christ, okay? Jesus Christ, the high priest, offered himself to God as a single sacrifice for sins. Good for all time. Then he sat down on the place of honor at God's right hand. There he waits until his enemies are humbled and made a footstool under his feet. For by that one offering, he forever made perfect those who are made who are being made holy. Wow. The Lord is telling you, you are made perfect in the presence of God. The blood of Jesus made you and me perfect in the presence of God. So you do not condemn yourself. Oh, ginawa ko na naman itong bagay na ayaw ko. You know what? That is the old covenant when there is performance to be done. But now, when you are accepting the Lordship of Jesus, the blood of Jesus made you perfect. Therefore, we can go to God anytime because we are now the righteousness of God. God looks at us as righteous because of the blood of Jesus. That's why I love Holy Communion because it is reminding me always that I am right before God. My sins are forgiven and my sins are all forgotten. Hallelujah. He remember our sins no more. Wow. Another thing is that Jesus is praying for our triumph. Let's read Romans chapter 4, or Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Let's read this. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. And this is what it says. Jesus is praying for you and for me. Wow, what a beautiful picture. Jesus Christ is not just sitting down, sleeping, watching movies. No, he is praying for you and for me. Can we say that? Oh, Jesus is praying for me. Wow. Can we say that again? Jesus is praying for me. Now, let's read the scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. Who then is left to condemn us? Certainly not Jesus, <laughs> the anointed one, for he gave his life for us. And even more than that, he has conquered death and is now risen, exalted, and enthroned by God at his right hand. So how could he possibly condemn us since he is continually praying for our triumph? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, 34 is telling us that Jesus Christ is. How many times is he praying? Continually. Continually. Continually praying. Now, is this telling us something? Do you remember when people are, you know, uh, busy? Now let's pray. Let's pray. I think there is something that we need to learn today. It is Jesus Himself praying for you, praying for me, that we may triumph. Wow. Medyo balikta data, ano? Many times we think that by our prayers we change things. But here, Jesus Christ is praying for you. Now, when Jesus Christ is praying for us, that means to say that the Holy Spirit is working in us. He will allow us to remember what he said. And then God will give us wisdom. God will give us understanding. God will give us ideas that will allow us to surpass and triumph over our circumstances. Wow. Jesus Christ is praying for us and ending, not, not ceasing to pray for us. Another scripture similar to that is found in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Open with me to Hebrews chapter, 20, chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews 7, 25 says from the Passion Translation, So he is able to save fully from now throughout eternity. Everyone who comes to God through him because he lives to pray continually for them. Wow. Jesus Christ can save us throughout eternity because everyone who comes to God. Now look at this. When you come to God in prayer, when you say, Father, 
Father, your kingdom come, your will be done in my life. Father, I have situation right now. I commit it to you. Give me wisdom and understanding. Then the Lord is there. Actually, we are the answers to Jesus' prayer. When we come to God, when we come to God, it is because Jesus Christ has been praying for us. Now, this is the truth. Someone is praying for you. Can you say that? Someone is praying for me. Can we say that? Someone is praying for me. Now, when your pastor, when your friend, when your loved ones forget to pray for you, remember this, someone, and that is Jesus Christ, praying for you. Wow. Wow. How can that be? How can we expect defeat in our life? How can we expect that we are defeated by the enemy when Jesus Christ himself is praying for you and for me? Wow. We, that is the reason why we always triumph from victory to victory because someone is praying for us. Can we say that again? Someone is praying for me every day every hour every minute and every second of my life and that is jesus christ wow how can he do that he is powerful because all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him that is found in matthew chapter 28 verse 18. wow beautiful now let's go to the question we had who is now in charge? Now, maybe the question is, why is Christ praying for us? Can we say that? Why is Christ praying for me? Now, look at that. In the origin of creation, when we were created, actually, actually, Jesus Christ made you in his likeness and image. Can we repeat what is stated in Genesis 1.26? We can memorize that. That's the best thing that we can think of because that speaks of our identity. You are no ordinary person. Can we say that? I am no ordinary person. I am a child of God. I am created in God's likeness and image. Now look at that. Genesis 1, 26 says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. Can you imagine that? We are like God. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. We are in charge. Now, the reason why Jesus is praying for you and me, because we are now in charge. Can we say that? I am in charge. Wow. So don't ever think, the government is in charge. Of course, the government has a role to play in managing the earth. They too are what? Ministers of God. But you and I has the more authority given by God as a church. Remember, when you believe Jesus as Lord, he made you to be part of his body. He is the head. We are part of the body. Whatever part of the body, we that's that that that's not uh it's not important anymore. But we have a part to play because we are the body of Christ. Now, I want you to look at if you don't fully grasp it, uh, why did God need to have you in charge? Now, look at this. If God is ruling over the universe, and then you are his child. If God is king, you are prince, tama po ba? Yes? In some other scripture, it says we are made kings and priests. So if you are king, then you need to be ruling, tama ba? Yeah. So God gave earth for us to rule. Now, I have another verse for you. Psalm 115, verse 16. Look at that. Psalm 115, verse 16. This is what it says. The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth. Can we repeat that? But he has given the earth to all humanity. Uh, can we repeat that? Psalms 115, 16. The heavens belong to the Lord, but he has given the earth to all humanity. 
Now, who is in charge of Earth today? It's humanity. Now, there are two kinds of people today. People who are now back to the presence of God and people who are still away from the presence of God. Those who are back to the presence of God, they are called, again, the sons of God. Because originally, we are called the sons of God. But when Adam sinned, everyone, everyone, because of one sin, everyone sinned. But I have a good news for you. We have learned that last week, that because of one man who died, whose blood was offered on that cross, all of us now are candidates to go back to God. So those who believe, they are now back to the presence of God. So there is now the enemy, the one who refused, the one who rejects the death of the Lord Jesus Christ as true. And they are motivated by the prince of this world, Satan, the enemy of God. People are not the enemy of God. Satan is. But there are people who would rather obey Satan than follow God. That makes, you know, some people the enemy of God if they refuse and they follow the works of the enemy, the leadership of Satan himself. So in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, this is telling us, human being, that we are elevated, elevated. Now, let's look at that. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, for this is what it says. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. For God will not place the coming world of which we speak under the government of angels. So the world will not be managed by angels. Verse 6. But the scripture affirmed, what is man that you would even think about him or care about Adam's race? That is we, human being. You made him lower than the angels for a little while. Now, the word little than the lower angels, there, is other, uh, there are other translations that we are made lower than Elohim, lower than God. So there are some translations like that in the original Hebrew. So this is very important because God made us just lower than him. Now, other translations is lower than the angels. Now, it says here, What is man that you would even think about him or care about Adam's race? You made him lower than the angels for a little while. You place your glory and honor upon his head as a crown. And you have given him dominion over the works of your hands. For you have placed everything under his authority. This means that God has left nothing outside the control of his son. Even if presently we have yet to see this accomplished. Now, Jesus God, God made and gave the, the control to his son, Jesus Christ. But who is his son? Jesus Christ is what? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we, the body of Christ, is the body of Christ, the church. And we are also addressed and called as kings and priests. So through us, through you and me, we reign. We are in charge in this planet Earth because Jesus is our head and he is praying for us. What a beautiful picture. Wow. So Jesus Christ is praying for us because he is, we are part of him. Tama ba? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 23, it says uh, again, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 22. And he alone is the leader and source of everything needed in the church. God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus and has given him the highest rank above all others. And now we, his church, you and I, are his body on the earth and that which fills him who is being filled by it. So the church, oh, the church is not the building. The church is not the cathedral. It is you and me. The one who say, Jesus, you are my Lord. You believe that? then you become part and the body of the church. Wow. Can we say that again? The church is not the building, but the one who says Jesus is Lord. Are you one of those who said, Jesus, you are my Lord? Then you are part of the body of the Lord. You are the church. Acts 16.31 says, They answered, 16.31, Acts, They answered, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. You in all your family wow for us 
to be part of the church is just to say, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. So remember, God has given us the authority. I would like to read one more scripture before we end. Matthew 16, 17 to 19. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah. He was speaking to Peter. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, brothers and sisters, you are part of the church as Peter is, then we have the same authority. Whatever you bind on earth, it will be bound in heaven. We have been talking about that in the previous broadcast that God has given you authority. Speak to your situation. Use your words, your authority. If you are sick, then command the sickness to get away in the name of Jesus. Wow. Thank God. Thank God. God is reminding us today that there is someone in charge on earth. If there is something wrong on earth, don't blame it to the government. Look at yourself. What are you doing, brothers and sisters? We are the one in charge. And we are to set the pace. If you want the world, our country to be beautiful, then speak it out. Speak the word of God. Remember what Jesus Christ said when he said, pray. Pray. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. That could be our repeated prayer every day. Lord, your kingdom will be established in the life of our leaders. Your kingdom, your will be done in the life of my child, my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister who is still away from you, who is going and stray from you. Declare that, pray for that every day. Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done, be established in his heart and, of course, in my heart. Wow, thank God that there is any reason for us to take communion today because Jesus Christ did it all for us on the cross and he resurrected from the dead to make that hope a reality. Wow, don't be afraid. When we die, we will be like Jesus. We will rise again from the dead because he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Are you ready now for uh, our communion? Please take the bread. I would like to read 1 Corinthians 11, 23. It says, For I pass unto you what I received from the Lord himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. Now I want you to think, I want you to declare anything that is not well in your body. Say, Lord, I receive healing. That comes from you. Jesus, according to the word of God, by his stripes, we are healed. Not only physical illness, emotional illness, spiritual illness, or anything, even our business, any relationship. If you want God's touch for that, that will be healed by Jesus Christ. Let's partake of the bread together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's take the cup. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed by my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Let's partake of the cup together and say, Thank you, Jesus. My sins are washed away. I am now receiving the new identity. I am a child of God and I belong to you and you are praying for me every day for my success. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and give you peace now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Thank you very much. And see you tomorrow. God bless.